Hi YouTube and happy Sunday. I apologize for missing the video yesterday, but I got so tired that I fell asleep before I had to ch I had a chance to make it. That said, I'm noticing that I'm getting a lot more visibility after a couple days on that uh, video on Evo, so I might might record videos uh, every other day. I also apologize for the noise in the background. I'm making a uh, cardiac paper computer on the Silhouette Cameo behind me. So I'll um, try and, and uh, tune out that noise as, as, as much as, as possible. Also, my um, kitty behind the, behind the cameras isn't being too disruptive. So um, she won't be an issue. Anyhow, so in tonight's video, I want to talk a little bit about this vintage computer right before you. This is a Tandy 64K Color Computer 2 that I got a year or two ago for 30 bucks with a lot of other stuff. I think there is a box with some IBM, IBM DOS books and and other stuff and it turns out that it works great I think it was listed as untested on Facebook marketplace but um, it turned out you know even untested to be working fine I think in a uh, 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 apartment tenant in some apartments by Grosvenor Strathmore station said this was left over by the uh, prior tenant so I uh, got very lucky to take advantage of that deal for those that don't know, the Tandy uh, Color Computer, let's zoom in on the logo here. The Tandy Color Computer was first released, I believe, in 1980 or 1981. And it was based not on the Z80 or 6502, but the, I believe, Hitachi, or no, uh, Motorola, excuse me, Motorola 6809 processor, which is very, very powerful. The uh, initial Coco 1 and Coco 2 had 64K of RAM. This is a Coco 2. The Coco 3, though, I think it had up to 512K of RAM or 1 meg. And even the capability of running uh, OS 9 as a multitasking operating system, which is incredibly exciting that you, know, you can have a multitasking operating system running on 8-bit machine. Uh, 6809s, as I understand, were very powerful amongst 8-bit computers. Uh, compared with, with, say, the 6502 and Z80. And these, I know, were used in a lot of scientific applications, graphics applications. I believe for running, I think a lot of machines ran BBSs, but um, the Cocos as well. Uh, this particular model, is, fortunately, has a mod to use uh, composite video instead of um, uh, RF modulator. So I'll briefly just show you those uh, cables and how they're connected. I have them uh, connected to my um, Sharp LCD uh, TV here, and I'll show do a quick demonstration in a moment. Okay, just get those um, composite video connectors disconnected, and you can see there are three coming out the back. Ironically enough, red and white are not for the uh, different uh, left and right audio components. Uh, red is for color video and then white and and nothing are, are for um, audio and I uh, definitely learned that by a process scientists call guessing. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out. The other thing that I'm very lucky that this came with is a video tax cartridge that is essentially a terminal emulator. Uh, you can see how the um, cartridge uh, works there. Yeah, it has to be taped on. It is from 1981. As you can see, if I zoom in on the cartridge, that it is from uh, 1981. And uh, that's a really nice addition to have on this uh, Coco. Uh, in the future, I might get a Coco SDC. Uh, something to use you know, more programs and extend the functionality a good bit. A lot like that, um, well, more advanced than that uh, TI-7495 multi-cart I talked about in a recent video. Okay, let me turn this around um, and just show you what's on the back. Um, yeah, I'll probably just unplug it here from back behind. 
behind us. Let's turn this thing, turn it around. Um, yeah, you can see where these um, fun composite uh, video outputs are coming from. There's a power push button there. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see what those labels are. A um, TV composite output that's, it, well, I, I don't think that's a composite output. I think that's, that's for the RF modulator. Channel select that now is no longer usable. And then over here there are a joystick, a left and right joystick, a serial I.O. I plan to get a um, RS-232 cable and then a cassette cable and a super helpful uh, reset switch there. I'm not sure what this space down here is for. And then also if we look on the underside you can see 64K um, Color Computer 2 product of uh, South Korea. Uh, model number 263178 voltage 120 volts uh, just 0.2 amps at 120 volts which would make this what uh, uh, was it 24 24 watts which is, is is still quite a lot it's you know more than uh, laptops are used by uh, comparison opening case will void the warranty uh, no shit Okay, I don't think anything else uh, really significant. Definitely the next bit of excitement with this thing is, is getting a uh, real serial I.O. cable to be able to uh, log into a BBS, as you all know I like to do. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and back up here, plug this back in, plug the uh, composite video cables back in, and... Um, yeah, Alone in the Kitchen by Nino Ivanov. Uh, not so alone in the basement with uh, Abraham Muller. Okay, so I'll go ahead and reconnect those composite video connectors. Let's give this sucker a go here. Oh, oops. Yeah, I just touched the power switch. I got this uh, Sharp TV here um, for free in Philadelphia about... 10 or 12 years ago. So even this thing has a backstory. Okay, let's go ahead and plug those audio cables in. I think I got that right. And back up here so you all get a better view. Um, oops. Okay. Yeah, so I should probably uh, turn the TV on. And on. And uh, now I should turn the computer on. And boom. What do we have here? We have extended color basic 1.1 copyright 1982 by Tandy under license from Microsoft. We've got a little buzz coming out of the speakers. It is a color computer as, as you can see. And let's see what I can do in Extended Color Basic. Okay, I'll stay zoomed in on the screen and then zoom out to the computer. Uh, I can type in list and there's nothing. And I can do hello world print. Uh, hello world. Okay, and let's press enter. Oh, oops. Oh, <laughs> my mistake. So that is my fault. Let me get that detached and press reset. Yes, I, I partially put in the, um, uh, uh, what is it, Videotex ca uh, cartridge. That was my mistake. Not very good on my part. Okay, so let's just prove that I'm not completely incompetent and type in hello world. That that key feel is just amazing. I'll have to show that to you in a second. Okay, so we've we've done something with our color computer. I think we've we've at least gotten that lesson 
from this video. Let's back up a little bit and look at uh, the keyboard. Uh, just that key feel is, is really incredible. Uh, it's a full mechanical keyboard. It's even got a brake key here. It's just, I guess, ended up acting like Enter. I will have to try getting that connected to a BBS and getting it further extended. Um, I'll have to see if there's a beep command. Maybe not. Uh, or help. Yep. Or question mark. <laughs> that, that gave us something. Okay, so with that, I'll go ahead and uh, also show you that uh, the Videotex uh, cartridge seems to be recognized. And when I plug it in, you see it is Videotex 1.2 there. So that cartridge works. It'll be really incredible to uh, connect this to a BBS and all of its, what is it, like 24 by 16 line or something like that, or 40 by 16 line, I'm not sure. Uh, glory. Uh, something I forgot to mention in the beginning is in addition to the uh, newer versions of the color computer having rather decent um, uh, memory and, and uh, performance compared with other 8-bit machines, this also had relatively high resolution graphics. I think one of the modes was 256 by 192, which um, I think for the time was in, I think, like 16 colors or something, which at the time was quite good. It's, I think, about as powerful, if not more, probably about as powerful as the TI 994A, which is a 16 bit machine that I think is hamstrung by an 8 bit data bus, if I uh, recall correctly. Okay, so with that, I'll um, unceremoniously terminate uh, this video by turning off the color computer, and even more unceremoniously terminate it by uh, turning off off the computer, and also get a um, see if I can get a quick view of, of the cat here. Yeah, there you go. Get some uh, arm of my arm and cat on my lap who's, um, I guess, interfered with, with everything. And with that, I hope that was, that was um, informative and, and interesting. I'll definitely do more videos on the um, color computer, on the Coco 2 in the future. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, or questions, maybe your experiences with the TRS-80 color computer, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe as always. Thanks for watching, and I hope you had a great weekend. Have a great start to your week. Bye-bye now.